Hey guys, well, been absolutely just overwhelmed. It's just, man, the engine jobs, guys. Just unbelievable how the engines are just failing one after another. Um, I know I didn't video any of it, but I'll I'll finish up the video today. Uh, just show you where I was at, so I can put something out. Uh, here's the 6170R. Uh, got the hose up. I ended up rebuilding the engine, but the intake hose coming from the air cleaner to the uh, turbo had a crack in it, and I didn't want them to run it until I got that changed. It's a new engine. I didn't want them to dust the engine, you know. But, uh, and then here's the 8235R. That son of a bitch. Uh, now the water pump's leaking on it. I didn't even get it out of here. I test drove it the other day. They don't need it right now, so anyway, I got a water pump for it. It's leaking. Gee whiz. <clears throat> I just wonder if the battery stayed up on this thing. Caution light or nothing flashing. That's what we want. Get our oil pressure at 67 psi idling, cold. I mean, just fine. I let it run for a little while, let it charge up. I know it was kind of dead. That battery was. But anyway. Um, so the tractor, they've got like, I think they've got like eight or nine of these 6170Rs. That's number one. Number two, it's doing the same thing. I think it's gonna have to have the head pulled off of it too. They was waiting for me to get this one done and then we're gonna bring number two over here. But now I got, <laughs> now I got a, now I got a, uh, um oh my buddy kevin you guys saw you guys have seen that blue and white 389 peterbilt log truck that i've worked on well he he put his boy in that truck and he bought another one he bought a 2016 t880 kenworth with a cm 2350 isx cummins in it and so he first got the truck there and it's just been one thing after another you know uh he paid 105 grand for that thing and which you know i mean set up with log gear and everything and but it it's got turbo actuator problems it, it had a wheel seal out on the trailer had a bad slack adjuster on the right front side of the drive axle the king pins on the left front side are worn out and now yesterday he calls me and he said uh well long story short he left it at my house and now it's it's blown a head gasket and it's it's either dropped a liner it's pushing coolant right out as soon as you start it. And it's only got 437,000 miles on it. So he's not having the best of luck. Truck run for a little while, but we'll go over there now. I got the ISL 9 Cummins. Hang on, Duke's already... Duke heard the truck go. Hang on, Bubba. Uh, ISL 9 Cummins. I got the rockers and everything on it last night. This this one's the one they dusted. So we're gonna go try to finish it up. But we gotta go find the skip loader first. But supposedly, sounds like it broke a tie rod end or something. We gotta go find it. Well, I've already looked at. It. We're gonna leave. It's just not no sense. We ain't nothing we can do right now. It come unthreaded and then it pulled. It pulled the threads off the end here and then it screwed the threads up in this rod. So we're gonna have to replace this and replace this. And it's Saturday, so that ain't gonna happen. So I'm going down the hill here to the other ranch and continue on with this ISL 9. He's got a, this guy here's got a 6190 Argon deer that they feed with during the winter. They pull a 
grinder with it and he wants a block heater he said it starts okay he said but he'd rather have a block heater I, which i don't blame him I, I like block heaters it's it's just easier on the whole machine and the engine especially with it that coolant is already you know you can set them block heaters on a timer and have it heat that water up about an hour or two before you get there in the morning and then you get in the cab and they start right up and then the heater's halfway warm when you're when you're ready to go so i i don't think it's a bad idea at all to have a block heater anyhow well i'm going to head down to the isl 9 cummins and see what we got to finish that thing up okay just cleaning up this rocker box i can't remember I'm trying to remember. Put the marker box on on these ISL 9s before you put the JK heads, I think. Can't remember. We'll see here real quick. Yeah. The JK heads, you can't. You can't put the. Uh, you cannot put the JK heads on first. I'm almost certain of that. <clears throat> the way they're set up. Let me go get all the bolts. <clears throat> we'll put the ones with the red facing out on the outside. Injector wire harnesses. Kind of dropped the ball on my gloves, and my wife had to order some more. I just didn't think about telling her. I usually have to tell her, you know, to order me some more, and I just forgot about it. I don't like the way those wires right there. Kind of just rub right there. I don't really care for that. I was looking at the rocker box and I was sitting there going, I can remember if the JK heads went on first and I thought, well, you never, you'll never get the wires on the injectors. With the rocker box or with the uh, jake heads on it so obviously the rocker box has to go on first then the jake heads okay all right let me get some wrenches Uh, a little bit kind of I don't know man just <clears throat> every one of these engines you do I was turning it over here where the kind of the I call it the accessory drive but over here where the fuel pump gear is it seemed like it kind of turned over a little harder than I really would like but uh, I know it turned over it's got a lot of compression. I checked everything twice. I hope everything's right. So still got to get the Jake heads on there and then just the Jake heads. I 
This one's just right here on that cross head there. I had trouble with this Cummins reman head. <clears throat> I had to chase the threads on this one exhaust valve where the rocker bolts down to the head. I kept thinking I had something in there wrong. Well, I finally pulled it up, tried another one in there, and it was doing the same thing. So I determined it was uh, threads in the cylinder head. I had to chase them to get that to bolt uh, to screw in there right. That's not good. Okay, I'm ready to put jig heads on it and then torque those down and then adjust the jig brakes. And then we can put the valve cover on. Now this wire harness is right in the freaking way. A bunch of this stuff. Let's see them plug in right there. Let me go find a gear wrench. <laughs> Tired of that. Okay, we're getting there. And I get the turbocharger buttoned up. And all the hoses and tubes and all that stuff that's associated with that. Let's put that in here, I guess. These bolts back in here are just absolutely wonderful. Get on. Okay, I think most of everything on the exhaust side is done. Okay, we gotta get this knock sensor on here. It bolts down to the top of the valve cover back here. But I gotta find the little grommet. I remember that thing fell off and I grabbed it. And then I gotta situate this wiring in these little hold down brackets here. Sensors right there should be a wire.
those. Okay, I gotta find the little grommet there. Put that on. This is the coolant level sensor here. All that stuff will have to be zip tied up accordingly. Just we'll tie it to the AC lines. We'll put the Get this on and we'll put the piston cooling nozzles in i got new ones for that uh there's the old ones the new ones are right here and then put the pickup tube new pickup tube gasket that should be that one right there i think that's got to be around here somewhere we can find the gasket and then uh this line just charge our cooler hose here And then put the pan on it. And then pour oil in it. And then cross your fingers. Oh, look at that. Running shit with plugged up air cleaners. Can't read her. I just can't believe if they went and told the boss, nobody taught them how to read that. Most of these guys have been working here for, oh, probably. This guy here's probably been here for 20 years. And all of a sudden, he's really good at doing playing dummy. Okay, was there a clamp on this? Yes. No screwdriver right here, but I do have a... I've got a couple options here. Something like that. Make this process a little bit quicker. Alright. I've got to go look in here and find that grommet. That goes on that knock sensor hold down. And once I get that on there, I think we're just like really close to, yeah, we'll get underneath it and put the piston cooling nozzles on. Well, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, for some reason, this one went too easy. I got a feeling something will go wrong. I just got a sneaking feeling, you know. Let's see what happens here. It's gonna have no water. Let that lift pump cycle all the way through. I don't know. How do you turn this off? Not like that, I guess. Let this thing lift pump cycle all the way through. We might have to bleed it out that filter head too. cycle it again let it go off and then got it in I don't know I don't really hear that pump laboring down so we might have to bleed it out that filter head pressure gauge on this thing at right there Sounds good when it's cranking. Let's uh, let me bleed it out this filter head right here. 
And there's a bleeder right there on the filter head at five millimolar Allen. So my cycle didn't let it run fuel out of there for a while. Now let's shut it off. I'm gonna cycle again. It had plenty of as I had that was putting the plug back in it while the pump was running. It was trying to push the plug off. So it should it's building pressure. Somewhere here, huh? I pre lubed that new oil filter full of oil before I even stuck it on here. So it got oil pressure as fast as possible. Oh man, I cannot believe how perfect that is right on the full line. That is, I don't know how that, I, how the hell did I do that? Well, just before we put water in it, let's just see how it starts back up. We've got to zip tie this stuff up. We've got to get antifreeze in it, fill it clear full. And then i got to clean up this fender where all the oil is, where I've been stepping on it. And, Looks like shit. good enough for that okay well um get some new antifreeze dump in it make sure the, I got the plug in the drain port and then uh get a pretty good air leak over there yeah and we'll uh, run it for a while and of course the check engine light's going to be on because I had the extremely low water light code and so that's going to log a code and then you're going to have to erase it with insight and I don't have it with me so pretty certain that's what it's about these solid fan drives man they're hard to get these things to warm up like a truck you can leave the fan off you know, and then they'll warm up a lot quicker. These these solid fan drives are horrible for that. The guy with the the old Roadrunner did the retrofit. He really loves that fan, like a truck on there, because he said it the way it used to be in the winter before when he was loading trucks. He said it took forever for that thing to warm up when it was really cold. He says I think it's going to be a lot better with that with that fan in there.
charging. Let's see, where's the? Yeah, it's charging good. Good oil pressure. See, before when I before it was so bad, I'd get about half throttle. Even with the new bowby filter, even with the new bowby filter, about half throttle, the stop engine lamp was coming on because the crankcase pressure, because of all the bowby. Now in the full throttle, they don't come on. two broken rings but that top compression ring on number five and six were broke I knew it was really screwed up when I started cranking on it and I could hear the uneven crank on it to where well it does have cruise and I set the cruise and bump the idle up engine brake on idle increase all you're gonna give us is that about a 200 rpm or 100 rpm increase that seems kind of ridiculous there we go there we go Once it gets up to come op operating temp, and then see if uh, oh, that's why it labored down a little bit. I was wondering it labored down a little bit because the air compressor cut in, the air dryer just purged, so it cut out. probably get water circulated through everything and I'll have to add more water.
gonna put my tools up and just let it run, but I better watch it, you know. Something happens in thermostat six or something and I'm putting tools up and it overheats on me and screws up a new engine, I'm really gonna be pissed at myself. Wonder if this is like the trucks and you hit the brake and it shuts it off. Yep. guys well i'll be back here in a little bit when it warms up and we'll let you see see how it does we got her I just got to clear that check engine light I'll do that Monday I got the fender cleaned off here Rips on the ground, that's good. Pressure is about 35 psi idling, engine operating temperature. So that's good. It'll go up to 70 when you romp on it. Okay. I gotta hear it start one more time. I just got to. Okay, so all I really got left, I gotta zip tie some wires here. Might fix this air leak while I'm here. Hi, baby. Hi, good looking. You good looking son of a gun. You good looking son of a gun. What are you doing, you good looking? Oh, I got it. Watch your wild feet. About got me in the eyeball there, you crazy girl. I know. We're going to put shit up and go home. So you can see where the air dryer's purging and it's blowing oil out of there. Obviously, I would say you should probably change your dryer cartridge. I'll tell you what happened is they had that air cleaner so plugged up, I bet it was pulling oil right up through it to the intake. And and uh, uh, and it was coming back into the air system, I bet. Okay, well guys, uh, I'm gonna make sure that I video Kevin's truck. It's a 2016 T880 Kenworth with a CM2350 in it that's blowing compression gas. 
across the fire ring on one of them and coming out the coolant system. Anyway, upwards and onwards.